Hi everybody, um, today I'm going to talk about the Elder Force Index. Um, it's one that I use pretty often. Um, it's very valuable uh, in terms of understanding both price and volume. Um, so the way it's calculated is basically multiplying the price times the volume um, and then summing that up uh, for a period that you can specify. So um, when the period is specified, I use I use an eight period one, and you can do the result any color you want. Um, but basically, it's a pretty simple to understand the calculation um, and very valuable um, in terms of seeing what's going on in terms of the trends, uh, momentum, and uh, money flow. Um, so please like and subscribe. Um, let me know what kind of questions you got down below, and I can try to answer them uh, as well. Um, but um, basically what you can do is just like on regular charting, uh, technical indicators, you can do some charting as well um, and draw some lines and uh, just different diagrams and things to see what's been going on in the price. So the first thing I want to talk about is trends um, and how that works with using the Elder Force Index. So um, what I do um, a lot of times, you know, you can see that the trend is down here. Um, but how much down is it really um, including the volume, right? Um, so you can see that um, on this chart, there's certain um, ups, uptrends um, within the downtrend here um, that show a little bit different picture of what's been going on um, in terms of the price action. So in general, um, what you do is you take the zero line, which is right here, um, and if it's below um, the zero line, it's a negative trend, and if it's above, it's a positive trend. So whether we've recovered from that um, really depends on the signal period. So I have this period of eight periods. So we'll take the sum of the price and the volume for those eight periods um, and kind of add them together with the price and the volume. So you can see that here the price and the volume has been going down. Um, there were certain instances where it went up, but not quite up enough to be a positive trend. Um, so right in here, you can see there's two candles that were both positive, um, but they just didn't mount up to what the negative trend was um, for this. So you can see if you take the sum of this plus this, um, you'll probably get a little bit more on the downtrend side. Um, price also was pretty significantly down as well. So I added a signal on here, this red line. Um, it's just a moving average of 16 periods. Um, so um, I use that to help me understand certain time periods where when it's on a downward trend, is it also still partially an upward trend uh, as well. So in terms of momentum, um, it's kind of hard to judge that um, just looking at the price, right? Like when you say, what's the momentum? You have to look at the volume as well. So you can see there's pretty significant volume here. Um, uh, but when you sum up the volume of this plus this, you get a higher momentum down in here. So you see that this volume was quite high um, and the price drop was quite significant as well. So when you look at the price action, um, this, this section here was actually very significant, although you had this slight little uptrend um, within that, and that was actually pretty significant uptrend um, on price, and it almost took us back to positive. So, in general, when we talk about trends, we're looking at is it above or below um, the zero line. Um, momentum is really about what the magnitude is, so you can also draw a line. So, what I like to do sometimes um, to compare is I'll draw horizontal lines and I'll compare the the positive momentum with the negative momentum. Right. So here I see. Um, it's about 1.3 billion, and then here it's about 2.4 billion. So quite a significant more negative trend, and we're kind of on that. So um, now the next thing I want to talk about is reversals and divergences. Um, it's a little bit more of a complicated topic. Uh, so again, uh, we talked about the trends and momentum here, um, basically being <clears throat> the magnitude and then the direction being kind of which side of the line it's on. So the money flow, you could also say, is kind of uh, based on the line that you can draw um, around here. So the money flow is basically out of the market. It's the moving average line, you could also say. Um, so this is kind of money's flowing back into the market a little bit, but still pretty negative. Um, so there's many different ways to kind of categorize reversals and divergences. <clears throat> um, but typically, what you do... Uh, for a divergence or a reversal is you have to use an indicator <coughs> excuse me and when you see the indicator is showing something else 
um, the opposite. Um, it's usually a divergence. Um, and reversals um, can also be spotted um, kind of on the chart as well. Um, let's talk about divergences first because they're a little more interesting and fun um, to see. So basically, um, what a divergence is, here's an example of divergence. So this made a, so it actually made a lower low here on the chart, right? But on this chart, it actually made a higher low. That's what you call a divergence. So the line, the trend line is actually going up here, right? So that shows that this point is actually showing an upward trend. Um, and the only catch to that is that this still shows a downward trend. When you see the peak to peak here, um, this peak really, it maybe the peak hasn't hit yet, um, but um, on this, it shows it down. So a divergence is when the, they're opposite, right? So you see this trend is all going down, but the, this is going up. See a similar category here where it's going up, but then it becomes a convergence because it's basically this peak is lower. That peak and that peak's lowest. So that shows that the trend is still kind of, there was maybe a reversal here or, or some kind of uh, divergence. Um, and that is maybe a good sign because then the market might be going up at this point, right? So you could say um, that we kind of expect um, some kind of major turnaround here. Now, you can use these cross lines. I, I like to use these lines sometimes, and I say, you know, back this, this, uh, this chart shows a pretty strong trend line heading up um, into 2024. So this is a weekly chart, uh, so it's quite um, quite a long chart. But uh, but you can use that sometimes. If you do a daily chart, sometimes it can help a little bit better. Um, and you can see, uh, I can clear out these drawings on the daily chart. So here you can see it more clearly. Um, this is definitely heading up. Um, and this is definitely heading down, right? So we definitely see a change in the momentum here. Uh, and also the, the revert, it's a, basically a reversal right around here. Um, and you don't really see it yet, but it, most people would consider it right in here. So remember when we talked about the trend, um, when I draw a line right here, um, let me do a vertical line. So right in here somewhere, that on the 13th, um, was the this changing of the trend, right? So you started to have a lot of negative and then going to positive. So that's an example of where the momentum changes from negative to positive, right? And then you can also see that that was kind of already seen here um, because we see the divergence even before this whole trend line. So that shows that the trend is starting to reverse. So, um, now, I want to talk about breakouts and cycles next. Um, those are a little bit um, more difficult to spot sometimes, um, but what I do for them um, is I like to create a horizontal line. Um, so if this is a, a high level and this is a negative level, that's kind of a, a level where you can say there's going to be a breakout or there's going to be a cycle, right? So you can see that we had a little bit of a breakout here already and we're kind of in breakout territory right so this not only has the positive line heading out here um but we also have it being above this line here so that that means it could be a breakout and we can see that this is the end of a cycle right so we see these cycles going from positive to negative positive and then back to negative so the question is, is that will we see a cycle? We don't really maybe know that until we get to this point here. So we see the 18th is kind of a deciding line here for that um, whole um, breakout. If we do see more positivity in the next few days, um, we should know by the uh, November 18th or so. So right here we're at um, you know October 31st, which is Halloween. So let's look at some other examples in the past here where we see pretty significant breakouts in the negative direction. Um, so all of these are considered that, and you can see that um, you have this breakout of this level. We see a level that we kind of see is pretty solid, um, but we're kind of expecting breakouts here. Um, 
and we can kind of bet on that from time to time. So here you see a very negative trend hitting out and very steep slope. So that if this slope is pretty steep, um, you know that you're going to get probably a breakout there. So let's draw some lines so you can see what that looks like. So from here to here, that's that level. And you got the breakout right from here, technically, right? So we didn't get really a positive signal. So we didn't get a positive signal on that. And then we got a pretty steep slope here. So when the slope is pretty steep um, and, uh, you know, it's going to get, then basically can, can be a breakout um, of this level. So we see that this level right in here um, for the daily chart uh, is perhaps going to be broken. So I want to take a moment just to show you the calculations here. Um, so you can see that if we take a horizontal line here um, and we get a, a line of about, let's say 100 million, let's just bring it up to here. So uh, 100 million trades per day on the SPY. Um, now you can see that the numbers here um, are around two or 300 million, right? So that's basically taken from, uh, you can see 200 million. So if you take the percentage points, two point something, three, three points multiplied by that, you can basically get the same number. Um, but getting back to um, the breakout section, um, I want to talk about support and resistance now. So um, classically, on a support and resistance, what you do is you take a volume profile and you draw these horizontal lines. And you can say, this is starting to get a little slow, so I'm going to remove some of these charts. So you can see that there's generally a level of resistance there, and there's a level of support in here. So we're kind of just breaking this level at this point. Um, and that... The more that we look at the chart, the more you can see there's another, this is more confirmed support down here, right? So you can see that these are the volume, when you take the volume profile, you can see that. Now, on this chart, the way that we look at that is a little bit different. Um, it's basically support and resistance is determined by the magnitude of the uh, price times volume. So it's this is considered, so we have a support and resistance levels here. So once we get beyond this level, and this might even be further down because of these charts are so high. So we can see that if we get anywhere beyond this level, there's gonna be some resistance to get even more negative. Um, so this is considered a force index level of support or resistance, right? So on this side, this is considered a level of support and on this side, it's considered a level of resistance, just like you have on the charts um, for this, right? So we're almost meeting this level of support. And you could probably pull this down a little bit into this area because we have another volume candle in here. So we can say that we're already above the level of support. Um, now, it looks like we're breaking the level of resistance here, right? So we've already broken it back in here. Um, because we went beyond that. Now, there wasn't really any level to prove that. Maybe some consolidation back in here, you can say that. Um, and that shows up right in here as well. You can see these. But it shows up differently um, just because it's there's actually a level in here that it shows. So you can start measuring this and saying that these levels of support match to certain levels in the past. So you can start to say that this point here maybe actually means that we should be up into here. So I'm going to draw some lines on here again to show what's been going on. So this line shows that right in here, we're technically not going to break the level of support until this whole line and this one. You can see that we probably could have broken it right in here. And we will be confirmed if we can break it by the lower low. So this is the higher highs. And this is the lower low channel. So there's a channel, just like what we would draw on the charts here, we kind of see a channel here and here, right? So this is like a channel heading down. Now that can be also drawn on the indicator for the force index, and you can kind of see here. Now once it gets past the 17th, we'll know for sure whether or not we actually are going to break this level or not, right? And we're kind of halfway. We're going to say... 
by the time we get to be halfway between that, we should know for certain. But so it's perhaps at the end of this week, right? So there's a couple days in here where we got to chart some things and say, and then by the 5th or 7th, because the 4th is actually a Friday, so you got to go to the weekend, and 7th will be a Monday. So by the Monday, we should know really what's going to happen on this chart if we're going to break this level and keep continuing up beyond what we have seen. <clears throat> and that would really you start to see is what we're trying to question is would be this level in here, which is technically right about here. So it wasn't at the peak that we hit the peak. The actual peak was actually right in here because there was actually volume. If you look at the chart there, you can see the volume is actually right in here. So that's why the volume shows up here and the price movements were biggest. So we may actually only make it up to here, which is actually where the volume profile shows, not up to here. So that's consistent there. So you can see you know, that we're basically running up to a level like in there. Now, how long will it take to get there? You know, you don't really know. That's the fastest path up, right? So, and then there's a kind of a spread um, between the fast, faster pass and slower pass. And you can kind of estimate that here, um, doing some charting like this. But um, the other way to do it is with um, kind of checking on the, the force index.